is Dr. Blair Kerner and I teach bassoon at the Setner School of Music at Syracuse University. So today's topic is about the introduction and hornpipe by Francis Baines. The hornpipe is an old dance that was started around the 1500s and by the 1700s became associated with sailors. Um, there's actually many forms of the hornpipe. There's a folk version and then there's a baroque version which was taken over by places like France, but the hornpipe originated from Britain and Ireland um, and eventually would be associated with sailors. So essentially sailors would put on hard shoes and dance to a hornpipe, usually by themselves, but ever so often in groups. So today our topic basically focuses on two details. One is the dynamics, the contrast between them, as well as some stupitos. And two, making sure we count our rhythms, because there's some tricky things in here that I would like to point out. All right, dynamics. So this piece has a lot of louds and softs. There's lots of fortes and there's lots of pianos, and there's very little mezzos written in there. So we want to make sure that we really have strong fortes and strong piano contrast. Now what is written in here are crescendos. So we get a lot of these crescendos usually that occur after a piano. So for instance, in the introduction on the third line, second measure in, it says piano crescendo. Great. So as you do the next few measures, you're going to keep crescendoing. Cool. That's not too tricky. The thing that's a little confusing sometimes is the fact that sometimes you will get a crescendo or something that will increase it, but then there will be a piano afterwards. For instance, again, in the introduction, the second line, it starts at a piano in dolce, so a sweet piano. You play through this, and then by the third line, it starts crescendoing and getting some strong accents. But then this next measure, it goes down to the piano that we had just mentioned. So technically, that's a subito. It's not written in there, but you're going to want to take that back because otherwise you're not crescendoing to anything. Another example of this is actually in the hornpipe. So if you think three lines down, we get that same theme, ba, ba, da, da, ba, ba. it says piano, subito, a crescendo. So that one it actually acknowledges the subito piano. Great, so we drop down, and then it says crescendo, and we crescendo for what I would assume would be the next three measures. But then the next measure has a piano again. So we're not crescendoing to the same dynamic. You can't crescendo to the same dynamic. So that one would have to be, again, a subito drop. So it sounds something like this. We're starting on the third line of the hornpipe, the end. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so it drops right down and it gets into this cute little bouncy part. So acknowledge that sometimes it's not written in there as a subito anything. That's okay, that happens. So just look at the dynamics around it and agree that if it crescendos into a softer dynamic, then that usually means it's a subito there. Cool. The next thing I would like to highlight is this concept of some of the rhythms in here. The introduction's in 4-4, four, four, but the hornpipe is in 3-4. But there are some concepts and some ideas that transfer from one to the other. And if you're not careful, you'll count them incorrectly. The prime example is just that little theme that I played for you before. In the introduction, that theme fits into four beats. <laughs> fits into three beats. It goes by quicker. Not the actual hard rhythms, the sustained notes. So you want to make sure that you count one, two, three, ba -da -da -ba -ba in the intro. And then in the hornpipe go one, two, ba -da -da -ba -ba. it happens faster. And so sometimes you might be thinking of the prior rhythm and you'll sustain it for too long. Or vice versa, you'll be practicing the upper part and you'll do it too quickly. So make sure to count that. This also occurs at the end. So at the end of this, um, this little uh, phrase, we have a low D. In the introduction, because it's in 4-4, we sustain that for three beats, hit another D, and then move on. Great. But in the hornpipe, we do it for two beats, hit another D and move on. Again, it moves a little quicker. So you just want to make sure that you're aware of when it changes, when the same theme occurs in both parts. In addition to the theme um, in both parts making it a little tricky sometimes in the counting, the hornpipe itself sometimes likes to trip you up. My prime example for this is the second line. When we go something and then a low C and then it goes into the third line something and then a low C right so in the second line the C the first one is on the beat one three one the second one the C is on beat two So in context, it feels a little weird because the shifting of the low note just goes off slightly. In addition, the theme that follows it enters at a slightly different spot in our mind, or at least we rest for a different uh, length of times because of the C. So the first time the theme comes in, the first time we have an extra long rest in there. The second time it goes much quickly and we have to jump in to the melody. So little things like this when you're counting needs to be really, really important to mark in, to acknowledge that it exists and practice it properly so you know that you're doing it correctly. So that's really it for what I have for the introduction and hornpipe. So really just a quick review. Two things, one, dynamics, there's louds and there's softs, so embrace them, go for them. And when you see a soft dynamic after a crescendo, know that it's some sort of subito. So it's okay to back down to it, even if it doesn't specifically say subito. And then two, make sure to count this. There's themes that transfer from a 4-4 to a 3-4 that are a little tricky. And even in the 3-4 itself, sometimes the meter shifts a little bit um, in the sense of where the placement of a low C would be. So we want to make sure that we count that properly and we feel where one is the entire time. All right, that's it for the introduction in Hornpipe. Go practice.